Good morning, St. Andrews. Welcome to our Palm Sunday worship. We are looking forward to it. And take a look at the uh, the palms that we have out here. We have our wonderful ones. Thank you to our Flower Guild. Uh, Martha, thank you. And we have another one over by the font. We can take a closer view of those with pictures um, that are taken. And we, of course, are vested in red for our Holy Week. Our entire list of Holy Week services is posted and up including our outdoor worship today for those who wish to gather outside at 10 a.m. And we will have an Easter celebration, uh, outdoor worship uh, at 10 a.m. next week, but not before we go through uh, Mon uh, Holy Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, um, through Holy Saturday and into the Easter vigil on Saturday evening and then Sunday morning. Take a look at what we have and when we have it. If you have questions, feel free to uh, to give a, a call to the office or email all of us, and we look forward to celebrating. One more brief announcement. As we go forward today, we will have an 11 o'clock fellowship, and then at 11.15, we are going to have our final forum. We're going to revisit the third question of our baptismal covenant. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Uh, we're going to revisit that middle one. Thank you, Colleen, for your presentation last week. And we look forward to this time together. Okay, before we go any further, I want to give a brief homily for children of all ages. So today we have palms. That's what's in those decorations right there and right there. It's called Palm Sunday. On this Palm Sunday is when Jesus rode on a donkey, or in some Gospels, it's a small horse, uh, but rode on a donkey, and we will have our donkey outside, weather permitting, a uh, donkey into Jerusalem. Now, it's not just anybody who gets to ride a donkey, and people, they put down their, they took off their coats and put it on the ground in front of them. And they, they've got branches and shrubs and put it down. Now, they don't do that for just anybody. That's usually done for kings and queens. And that is who Jesus is to us. That's how important Jesus is. Jesus is even more important than any king or queen we can imagine. Yes, even Queen Elsa. Jesus is that important. That's why we change our colors today, and we're, we're about to go and remember what Jesus did on the last days before Easter. That's what this whole week is about. And we have special services for people of all ages uh, at each of these days. So take a look at those that are coming up. But today, remember that Jesus is kind of like our king, the best and that's who we look to, and that's who we follow. Amen. And now, wherever you are, and especially if you're a new word to this community, we want to welcome you. Uh, and wherever all of us or any of us are on our journey of faith, and whenever we are worshiping, know that whether we're outside, worshiping online, worshiping later, that we are all worshiping St. Andrew's one together.
Our service for the celebration of the Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday, on this, uh, this weekend, begins on page 270. Or you may follow along in the online bulletin. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. They were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on the colt. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that had been cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now proceed to the readings. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens in my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicts me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A Psalm of David, Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness, save me. Here ends the psalm. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the festival or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, 
Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you. You can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before and for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of me. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparation for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as Jesus had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It will have been better for one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of the disciples said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to the three disciples, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you are all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, you are asleep. Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, Jesus went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. Jesus came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while Jesus was still speaking, 
Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with them there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, The one I kiss is a man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when Judas came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then the crowd laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of Jesus' followers deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. The crowd caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priests, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed Jesus at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against Jesus, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent and did not answer. And again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of of the blessed one? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? The whole council condemned Jesus as deserving death. Some begin to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took Jesus over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And Peter went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the servant girl, on seeing him, began, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again, Peter denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused Jesus of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, Pilate used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? 
for he realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? The crowd shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, Pilate handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole court. They clothed Jesus in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed spat on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. The soldiers compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry Jesus' cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then the soldiers brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And the soldiers crucified Jesus and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified Jesus. The inscription of the charge against him read, The king of the Jews. And with Jesus, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided Jesus, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking Jesus among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to Jesus to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way Jesus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and of Joses and Salome. These used to follow Jesus and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When even, evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if Jesus were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether Jesus had been dead for some time. When Pilate learned from the centurion that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. 
Joseph then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Josie's, saw where the body was laid. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Don't worry, it's a homily this morning, not a full sermon. Uh, I think the gospel pretty much preaches for itself. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is that whenever you hear a distortion or a misreading of the gospel, read it again. And each and every time, each and every Sunday that we read the gospel, I think the Spirit works, and I would like you to listen for what you hear. The Spirit moves each and every time. Okay, so this week, I'm asking you a question. Have you ever met that celebrity or that king or the queen, maybe, um, or somebody that is just makes you at awe, or you lose the ability to communicate, maybe? I hear that about Bill Murray, meeting Bill Murray um, uh, and other celebrities. Who is it that you have? Have you ever kind of been awestruck or uh, celebrity struck? I remember my oldest when we were able to visit um, Florida when she was very young. She got to meet Anna and Elsa, hence the reference in the children's homily about Queen Elsa. And she just lost her ability. She was just so awestruck. Um, and she didn't quite know what to do. It took her a minute to gather herself to realize what was going on. That kind of awe is what I'm curious about. Because Jesus comes in today, writing in Mark's gospel in the cult. We have the donkey outside. Luke, it's the donkey, and in Matthew, it's kind of both. Um, but that is something that was reserved for kings coming in and proclaiming. Pulling shrubs down is not something you would even necessarily do um, and palms on the ground, not something you would even do for somebody held in high esteem in your family. This would be somebody that you would literally be so at awe about seeing and being in their presence, much less taking off their cloaks and putting them on the ground. This would have been a very, uh, a likely a very dusty atmosphere in the Middle East at the time. Um, so taking off their cloaks, their clothes, and on the ground for them to walk on. This was reserved for somebody in such high elevation, high esteem, deserving of incredible awe. That's the Jesus that we welcomed into Jerusalem today. And in Palm Sunday, we kind of get a sample of the whole entirety of Holy Week. And Mark's gospel is perhaps the most raw, the most real, and the most difficult to listen and read. Maybe take it home and read it again this week. It is, uh, it is the one, too, where the disciples seem to flee the quickest and leave Christ the most abandoned. And it hurts because we might find ourselves in those disciples' shoes, the same disciples who proclaimed him as Messiah, leaving, abandoning him as the man who was left running, abandoning Christ at the scene of Gethsemane. So who is Christ in our lives? Where, where is Jesus in our lives, in our community or in your individual life? Jesus so often, even within our, our modern Christian system, whether within the Episcopal Church or others, tends to be on the periphery, uh, reserved for those feel-good religious experiences and not a way and being of life calling to difficult, hard discipleship, but is reserved kind of for this, maybe the spiritual but not religious components of our lives. Or is Jesus the king, the center, the person, the God in whom we center our lives? Who is Jesus to us? Who is Jesus to to you this Palm Sunday and something to reflect upon throughout this Holy Week experience. Amen. Let us recite together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Hong Kong. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Upper Tidewater Region churches. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for continued guidance in the pandemic, for our health care workers and all who tend to the wounds in our world. We pray for racial reconciliation. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community of St. Andrews. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray in particular for Eve, Jen, Tina, John, Janet, Carol, Edward, Chris, Gloria, Teresa, Al, Larry, Dale, Katie, Garson, Lori, Bill, Hugh, Susan, Jesse, Linda, Ed, Anne, Claire, Tom, Jack, Janet, Nancy, Lisa, Marie, Heike, Sarah, Mary, Pam, Terry, Charles, Theo, Anne, Lloyd, Douglas, and Mike. Are there others? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, praying in particular for Charlotte Hales, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Please share the peace with those in your family, your pod, by email or text or phone. And remember to share that throughout the week so that we all may be have reminders of Jesus' peace in this world. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself a sacrifice and offering to God. Let us pray as our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Were you there when they crucified, my Lord? Were you there when they crucified, my Lord?
the blessing of God, the Creator, Jesus, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier, be with you, remain with you always. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.